So far, the EU and US response to Israeli genocide has been straight from the abuser's handbook, Darvo. Deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. And if that doesn't work, you just change the subject. So as the genocide in Gaza continues, you want to talk about everything but Gaza. You refuse to put the item on an agenda, an agenda stacked with every cliche imaginable from Venezuela to Iran with pride of place given to the old reliable Russian interference. Another US-backed and funded occupation of Haiti and that will be lent a black face by Kenya is one of the worst ideas I've heard for a while. The Kenyan police are notoriously violent and have a history of working in collusion with gangs, not disrupting them at home in Kenya. Haiti has been occupied multiple times and every time the situation seems to get worse. The crisis today is a direct result of the Brazil-led UN occupation from 2004 to 2017. Haiti doesn't need foreign forces. It needs the IMF to stop choking them to debt. They don't need structural adjustment programs. They need health and aid workers, debt relief, and the ability to grow their own food. In the 70s, Haiti was self-sufficient in rice production. Now it buys 82% of its rice from the US. When will the US stop suffocating Haiti, carrying out coups, backing dictatorships, and crushing their economy? Their, this mission is a human rights disaster in the making just like all the previous ones. Thanks, President. In a UN Security Council minute from January this year, it stated the persistent political impasse in Haiti remains a significant obstacle to effective governance. Well, they should know because those responsible were in the same room. Haiti is, God help them, an assisted state, supported in nation building by the US, pretty much like they helped Iraq and Afghanistan. Is it any wonder it's such a mess? All Haitian elections since 2004 have been monitored. Constant foreign interference, effective military occupation, Western NGOs taking over basic public services. What's left to vote for in a country no longer their own? And clearly Western powers want to control Haiti's destiny. They're doing everything they can to colonize them again. Well, they should look back at Haiti's history. This is an island of slaves who rose up and drove out their colonizers. You will not prevail. The people of Haiti will find a way to take back what is theirs. The silence about the genocide in Gaza is deafening. The latest European Council conclusions don't even mention the words Gaza, Israel or Palestine. No debate on Gaza in this week's plenary. A vote yesterday to get the historic ICJ ruling on the agenda was defeated. Only 77 MEPs supported it. 100,000 casualties in four months. 1.8 million displaced, food insecure ethnically cleansed and now starving. Over 11,000 children killed by the Israeli regime. The UN's highest court has ruled that the Palestinians in Gaza are at risk of genocide and we don't want to talk about it in here. People all across the world have taken to the streets demanding a ceasefire, but the EU stands with the Zionist settler colonial project. Are you censoring discussion on genocide because you are complicit in it? The EU is dripping with hypocrisy and it is dripping with the blood of Palestinian children. Thank you, Sean President. So far, the EU and US response to Israeli genocide has been straight from the abuser's handbook, Darvo. Deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. And if that doesn't work, you just change the subject. So as the genocide in Gaza continues, you want to talk about everything but Gaza. You refuse to put the item on an agenda, an agenda stacked with every cliche imaginable from Venezuela to Iran with pride of place given to the old reliable Russian interference. So across Please the pond, Croatia. Special Agent Nancy Pelosi gives the signal branding Palestine protesters as Kremlin operatives and like clockwork, the dark insinuations begin in Europe. Everyone can see what you're doing. It's tedious, it's predictable. You've been doing it since 2016 to the and it isn't going to work anymore. The mass movement is focused like a laser on genocide. Everyone knows it's happening and Europe is... I'm sorry, this is a debate with a title and so you should stick to the issue. Thank you.
Your speaking time, sorry, your speaking time is also over. So thank you very much. We come to our next speaker. Uh, Russia Gate. I mean, sometimes this place is beyond belief. The greatest scam of recent times is getting an EU makeover. If you're worried about Russian influence here, look no further than the MEPs that have been fueling the war in Ukraine. Russia now has the largest economy in Europe, thanks to the people that were fueling the war. The German economy is going downhill. How in God's name, the people that have actually supported the war in Ukraine and didn't want it to stop, you've actually been doing Russia a favour. Are you being paid by Russians? I mean, your incompetence is helping Russia. Putin and his cronies have got complete control of their economy again, thanks to ye. You're a joke, you are. Well, what is going to grow up like? I mean, the amount of nonsense we heard in here today about Russiagate is off the Richter scale. It's like children. I mean, you know what? You wouldn't get, you wouldn't get a decent job, you wouldn't in the real world. Please come to an end. Before Russia invaded Ukraine, NATO was in terminal decline. The scam of European moral superiority wasn't working. A spent force, discredited by decades of illegal wars, Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, and then along came Russia and took the bait. And the whole sorry saga went down the memory hole. European leaders parading around, chanting about glory, draped in flags, pretending to care about democracy and international law while slobbering over arms contracts. It's easy to see why you'd want the war to go on, but it's over. And while you're amusing yourselves with your pantomime Churchill Act, Ukraine is running out of men and running out of hope. As European economies tank, few believe that victory is around the corner. Even the White House is backing off and your support for Israel shows you never cared about democracy. It's about handouts to arms companies and the might of the US. We had a problem with this proposal from the very start and I suppose the trilogue hasn't really improved it much for us. We were asked to massively expand the EU machinery for sharing biometric data with no evidence that this would do anything to make crime investigation more effective or more successful. We were just asked to trust the Commission that that would happen. Well, no thanks, I don't think so. Not just that, we were asked to agree that third countries could launder their dodgy data into EU police forces' data. For example, we now have a situation where the EU trusted partner, Israel, has a direct line to flag its political opponents, and there are many, to Europe's poli police forces and to pursue them in Europe. And we're supposed to bank on Europe's not Europol's notoriously shabby quality control to filter out the scurrilous falsehoods from the real thing. We know that that won't happen. It's another blank check for Israel to slander innocent people in Europe. But in any case, the whole thing is likely to be thrown out by the European Court of Justice on the grounds that it's disproportionate anyway. A few weeks ago, the State of Israel's Twitter account posted a picture of an Israeli soldier in Gaza holding a pride flag with the phrase, in the name of love, written on it. The depravity of Israeli propaganda knows no bounds. How dare they use the LGBT community as a prop to justify genocide? As if portraying Palestinian society as homophobic would ever justify wiping it off the map altogether. They don't care about gay rights, they care about salvaging their abysmal global reputation and demonizing Palestinians by spreading Islamophobic hate. Colonial powers have long weaponized notions of civilization and human rights to legitimize their plunder and military rule. Does the pretext of bringing in freedom and culture to racialize communities to justify a genocidal crusade not sound too familiar, especially for Europeans? We can all see through Israel's lies and pinkwashing. If the EU truly cares about LGBT rights, they should stand with the Palestinian LGBT community calling for dignity and self-determination. Thank you, Shun President. Our media and our social media is awash with hate speech and disinformation. Israeli officials are on air and online every day spewing out the vilest, most despicable hate speech. 
Silicon Valley tech investors and the Israeli government conspire in WhatsApp groups to shut down pro-Palestine voices online and to work their contacts to set online narrative for Israel. But of course, the Commission is not talking about the responsibility of platforms or the responsibility of anyone to do anything about any of that. Hate speech interference, it's only a problem when our lords and masters say that it's a problem. The Israelis have called it for targeting the entire Gaza population and causing severe epidemics to break out. They've caused Palestinians human animals, that children shouldn't be there. This is hate speech. It's disinformation. And there's pages of it. It spews out unchecked on all channels daily. And it has incited a genocide. A genocide that the Commission, the Council and a large majority in this Parliament are all in lockstep behind. So really it is an irony and a bit of a cheek that you come in here and pretend to care about hate speech and disinformation when you clearly don't. The sanctimonious lies, the hypocritical keening over our values, it doesn't fool anyone anymore. The Emperor has no clothes. Thank you very much, President. Um, the association agreements for the participation of third countries in union programmes, um, we understood that there was rules and regulations around association agreements. And the European Union has an association agreement with Israel and every rule that you conceive of has been broken. We have not, we have totally ignored our own rules. Israel is committing a genocide in Palestine. Israel has been persecuting the Palestinian people for 75 years, and we have no problem maintaining the association agreement with them. I, I'd like someone in the commission to explain that to me, because I just don't understand it. What does Israel have to do, this apartheid far-right regime? What do they have to do before we break the association agreement with them? How low do they have to get? 30,000 civilians are dead, 11,000 of them are children, and we have not even contemplated the idea of breaking the association agreement. I don't understand this. Thanks very much, um, President. This oral question calls for the Commission to legislate to allow democratic scrutiny by the Parliament of the implementation of association agreements like Horizon Europe. And I think the timing could not be better. Why, for example, is Israel part of Horizon Europe? Why does Israel get 22.73% of grants under that programme? Why did European taxpayers' money go to fund them in the development of Pegasus spyware that was used to target European journalists and politicians? And why is the EU-Israel Association Agreement still standing in the face of Israel's genocide? Hundreds of thousands of people across Europe are asking for that agreement to be suspended. Even lukewarm supporters of Palestine in here get it. I abstained on this vote because while scrutiny would be an improvement in the situation, we need a lot more power than that. We need to break agreements when human rights are violated. We need to suspend this agreement now. I voted against this file because the situation in Venezuela is very volatile and the EU should stop the situation from escalating rather than engaging in geopolitical games. I mean, let's remember, Venezuela's GDP has shrunk 80% in 10 years, forcing 7 million people to flee that country. It's a disaster, humanly, economically and societally. And former US Secretary of State Pompeo boasted that this was what US sanctions had resulted in. A humanitarian crisis, he said, that was increasing by the hour. He seemed to revel in the fact that it was increasing pain and suffering to the Venezuelan people. And the Biden administration is continuing on with these sanctions. The Venezuelan government had reached an agreement that has now broken down, showing how weak trust is. Against that backdrop, the decision of the US to reimpose sanctions is really dangerous. We should be concentrating on a diplomatic resolution of the conflict in Venezuela. Do I think that uh, there's a healthy democracy in Venezuela? 
I, I actually don't, you know, but I don't see one anywhere else either. And uh, as my colleague said, over 7 million people have left Venezuela because of the illegal sanctions that have been strangling the country to death since 2017. Now, the Center for Economic and Policy Research found that in the two years before Trump tightened the sanctions further to 2019, they had killed 40,000 people. The text not only ignores the carnage the sanctions are causing, but calls for more sanctions, this text today. I mean, it, it blames everything on the government. But I mean, have we any humanity? I mean, we actually have blood on our hands. We introduce sanctions that kill the ordinary people. Sanctions hurt the most vulnerable the most, not the leaders and the wealthy in the country. The most vulnerable and women and children suffer more. And our idea of sanctions is to get the people to uh, bring about regime change. Well, we have a terrible way of doing it. But you say we want free, free elections in Venezuela, but the Venezuelan people have been under relentless collective punishment. We're not going to get a normal election result. Why doesn't the European Union ab abandon uh, their like-minded US partner and have a healthy approach to Venezuela and help them to get on their feet. I don't understand the reason. Thank you very much, uh, President. I voted for this file because when the EU delegation goes to the UN Commission on the Status of Women in March, I want them to raise a few priorities. Priorities like war and its effect on women. How about the women in Gaza? where women and children make up 70% of its victims. No doctor, no midwife, no nurse to support women during labour. No pain medication, no anaesthesia. Women have to soak up and use tent scraps to soak up their postpartum bleeding. Two mothers killed by Israel every hour. Tens of thousands of babies and children without their mother's warm arms to hold them. Thousands have been left to scream and cry while they watch their mothers die in front of them. Women crushed by the most imaginable, unimaginable grief without a moment to recover, watching their children starve. But for the cruise missile feminists in here, there seems to be no fellow feeling. They want the atrocities to continue. That's not feminism, it's an abomination. I don't know if God will forgive them, but I and millions of others certainly won't.